Good afternoon. I'm Taraj A. Jenkins. And I'm Natalie Barr, and this is VCU Insight. Now, a historic moment here in Virginia's 4th Congressional District as Democratic candidate Jennifer McClellan won the special election. And this makes her the first black woman to represent the Commonwealth in Congress. Yeah, and I was actually at her watch party, and before she started her speech, she touched on what this moment means for women and also for the black community. So I'm sure her supporters are ready for her to be in Congress. It sounds like they are. She says she's ready to follow in the footsteps of her friend and former Congressman Donald McEachin and represent Virginia. McClellan started her political journey 17 years ago as a delegate. She has since been a leader for reproductive rights, voting rights, and climate change, and plans to continue to work across the aisle and bring that same leadership to Washington. McClellan won the district by almost 75% of the votes, winning all counties except for Prince George and Colonial Heights. According to the Department of Elections, two counties that voted for her opponent, Republican Leon Benjamin, back in November, actually flipped and voted blue this time around. Benjamin says he is saddened by the results, but will continue to fight for the American people and against the wokeness and division affecting our country. Now another special election will be coming up to fill McClellan's state Senate seat in late March. Okay, and that special election is going to be between Democrat uh, Delegate Lamont Bagby and Republican Stephen Imholt. Bagby, who is chair of the Legislative Black Caucus, defeated Delegate Don Adams and chair of the 4th District Democratic Committee Alexis Rogers in a firehouse primary last Sunday. Republican M. Holt previously ran for the House of Delegates in 2015 and served as co-chair of the Board of Education Finance Committee in Rockford, Illinois. The special election for the state Senate is set for Tuesday, March 28th, with early voting beginning on March 18th, and the last day to register will be March 21st. And now abortion, once again, was up for debate at this year's General Assembly session. And it's not only lawmakers speaking out, but pro-life supporters are at the Capitol to demand stricter abortion laws for the Commonwealth. I went down to the Capitol to talk to these pro-life supporters of all ages to give us a deeper insight into this fight. Colette Morin is no stranger when it comes to supporting the pro-life movement. Well, ever since I was a teenager, I've been involved with uh, this movement. Morin says the laws Virginia Democrats are trying to pass during this session are the most extreme. We've gone from, you know, uh, safe and rare to abortion, basically abortion on demand, anytime. She believes the debate for abortion rights between legislators should stay at the state level and not for the federal government to decide. Now, both Governor Glenn Youngkin and Attorney General Jason Miaris were in attendance, and the governor said the voters elected a pro-life governor, and those are the laws that he is committed to bring to our state. Students for Pro-Life America movement pride themselves as the post-Roe generation, electing leaders who are in line with their pro-life mission. Teresa Santafamilia is among many of the young people involved in the organization. Definitely hoping that the governor will be inspired by seeing this and see that the, the youth of Virginia really support uh, the pro-life position and wanting to help pre-born Virginians. That's very, very important. Reporting from Virginia State Capitol for VCU Insight, I'm Natalie Barr. And even after a proposed constitutional amendment for, for reproductive rights was passed earlier this session. Mm -hmm. um, House Democrats, they did try and change the rules to try and get that amendment to be passed anyway, saying that based on data, more Virginians want more abortion protection than they do less, and this will definitely be an ongoing fight. It sounds like it will be. Now, investigators are working to figure out the cause of a fire at King's Supermarket here in Richmond. Insight Zomas Harris shows us what the store looks like now. You can see what the fire here at King's Supermarket has done. The fire has left many doors boarded up and has also left the building closed for the foreseeable future. Firefighters were called Monday morning to the store just after 6. Crews spent about an hour controlling the flames and say the damage is significant, but the building is not a total loss. There were no injuries reported. Here shows the aftermath of the fire inside the store. Store owner John Jong says he has insurance and plans to rebuild the store as soon as possible but he's more worried about his customers because thousands depend on the store. Thousands of people depend on my store, you know, so I'm, you know, my, that will be, you know, uh, one good thing is I have insurance, so I just 
please talk with them, you know, and we're just trying to build back the store as soon as possible. In the meantime, the store owner is asking other stores to help his employees find jobs during the closure. Reporting for VCU Insight, I'm Zomas Harris. Movie Land in Richmond will no longer allow anyone under 17 at the theater. But Insight's Rachel Oliver tells us the new policy is only after a certain time. According to the theater's website, after 7.30, you must have an ID to get in. That rule will be in place no matter the movie's ratings starting March 3rd. Bowtie management tells local news stations this ban stems from customer requests. It's not clear if the company's other theaters will follow suit. Bowtie management owns theaters along the East Coast as well as Colorado. Reporting in Richmond for VCU Insight, I'm Rachel Oliver. Following the death of a VCU student who was recently killed while crossing the street, the university is now taking steps to help spread pedestrian awareness. Some of the efforts include having safety ambassadors dress as referees at crosswalks. Police are also speaking with students. The referees and officers blow whistles and dribble basketballs if a person violates a rule. For example, crossing a road during a red light. VCU will now team up with the Richmond Police along with the Virginia State Police to construct more initiatives to combat this issue. VCU is honoring Adam Oakes, the student who died two years ago after a hazing incident off campus. Mark Gad shows us how Oakes is being remembered. This plaque and bench outside the Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life inside the University Student Commons is dedicated to Adam Oakes. VCU held an inaugural day of remembrance this week on the anniversary of Oakes's death. The plaque features a QR code that connects to a webpage dedicated to Oaks and how to honor his memory, including hazing prevention education. Oaks was a 19-year-old freshman at the university when he died in February 2021 due to alcohol poisoning following an off-campus fraternity event. The fraternity has since been disbanded. Since the tragedy, VCU has done a number of things, like implementing measures to limit alcohol use, and reducing the likelihood of students experiencing hazing on campus. Reporting from Richmond, I'm Mark Gad, VCU Insight. Student debt continues to be a hot topic. The Supreme Court is now hearing arguments on President Biden's student relief program. Yabo Hunu takes a look at how this decision will affect millions of Americans. About 26 million people have applied to the program and are waiting for the Supreme Court's decision. Here in Virginia, there are over 680,000 applicants. President Biden's program aims to clear up to $20,000 for borrowers earning less than $120,000 per year. Opponents filed lawsuits blocking efforts of the relief program from moving forward. This is what democracy looks like! Show me what democracy looks like! This is what democracy looks like! Student loan payments are currently on pause, and it's likely we won't get to hear a final decision from the Supreme Court until the end of June. From VCU Insight in Richmond, I'm Yabo Huno. Before we go, here's a look at the weather for Friday and Saturday. Expect rain on Friday with a high of 52 degrees, and Saturday will be sunny with a high of 63 degrees. Now that's great weather to start off spring break, and we hope everyone has a nice and relaxing spring break. You can check out the latest edition of VCU Insight on Thursday afternoons on our YouTube channel. For VCU Insight, I'm Natalie Barr. And I'm Taraj Jenkins.